think it is working. Okay. Alright. Cool. Let's see. Where did we learn? Where did we leave everything off? Okay, so yeah, we pretty much got all the modeling completed. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, so from last stream, I know I had some, uh, I think a little bit of technical difficulty when it came to the end of uh, trying to do my bake in Marmoset tool bag, and I'm just gonna launch that up. The other monitor, bring that up in just a second, but I, I figured out the problem. It was just something with the uh, naming convention. It took just a little bit to correct that. And now the bakes are looking good. Let me bring up this file. And then you can see my screen. Because we got a little a little bit of touch up to do over here too. Okay. Oh yeah, so I also um, just pulled the magazine out so we can see that while we're texturing today. And that's basically the magazine parts are all parented to a little empty object and when you want to do a game when you want to do the game asset, you just pop that back to the world origin and the magazine is back in place. All right, so let's go over to Marmoset and see what do we need to do here. Now, every, now I, I just got the whole bake done and everything is looking pretty good. There's nothing that's being like cross baked onto each other. I guess I can talk about the uh, high poly a little bit. All right, so this will take a quick second to uh, bring this up, just while people are getting here. I am going to hide the low poly collection. All right, let's take a second to bring up the high poly since it's really dense. And I'll just talk a little bit about some of the changes I made from last room, and we are going to be getting into uh, Substance Painter pretty soon. And, hey! Hey, what's going on, Sayel? You got a little bit of time to catch some, some stream? Blender wants to bring it all. There it is. I had a bunch of my reference. Okay. So that was our completed high poly. And uh, did I change it? Yeah. Okay. So just a few things to clean up from last stream was. I did the uh, remesh, smooth, and decimate workflow on a few other parts, like the frame, which has all those modifiers on it. So, so like a bunch of these uh, smaller parts, usually I'll just do it with just bevel and two levels of, subdiv of a subdivision. But on a lot of parts, do the full remesh modifier which does a voxel remesh i smooth that out and then decimate it so it's a little bit more manageable in the scene and i just added that to a few other parts such as the frames this little uh trigger group here this barrel so that's all looking pretty good once again pop the magazine out This is already unwrapped. Uh, the bullet will have its own very small texture. It's a good course, isn't it? The Chomper's own uh, m &P, a little Smith & Wesson revolver thing. That's a good course. 
think I got it. All right. Okay, so in Marmoset tool bag, what am I gonna, yeah. Need to fix just a little bit of a skewing here. So let me go to the bake group. I'm gonna click on the low poly group here for this part. And uh, I think just paint skew, just to straighten this out right here. Because there's just a little bit of skewing around that, that boolean. Yeah, um, usually, like, when I opened up the file, I have the low poly collection uh, open, and I'll either have the um, the high poly either hidden, so, so it's not opening up all of that in the scene when you, immediately when you open the file, because, yeah, you, you'll be wondering, like, oh, my God, is this, is this Blender file going to open if you've left all of those modifiers, you know, uncollapsed and everything on your high poly, and it's all right there in the scene as soon as you open it up. Um, and if there's anybody else who's going to be watching this, yeah, a, lo a lot of people are all saying that with this whole... Um, the remesh workflow in Blender is finicky. It's, it, it'll complain with you. You can get it done, it works, but uh, you got to be a little bit disciplined with it. Okay, looks like there's a little bit of an offset thing here. Is that what this is? Yeah. Okay, so ah, uh, I think that's it. So if I'm looking at this at a profile, and I have the the high the high poly geometry is just hidden in this scene. But yeah, it's got a little bit of like a bevel right there, which is clipping. So let me just adjust the max offset. Let's see. Open it up to about maybe right there. All right, and what about this part? Did this not correct the skew? I might just have to redo the bake real quick. Let's see. Still, still a bit tired this morning, but should be able to stream for for a while. I'll stay. I won't do this for. I'll probably get through majority of the uh, texturing process if we can. Ah, okay. I just had to update and hit the little preview button. Ah, okay. Um. Looks like it cleaned up some of that skewing. That little clipping's gone right there. And the rest of the bake is looking pretty good. Now, that seems like there's a little bit of a transition here from where I painted that skewing first. So let me, let me just see if I can... Uh, maybe just make that a little bit more... like that okay let's say that's good enough I think just hit bake again so it just kind of cooks all that down all right and those are automatically have these automatically been uh, exporting 
Why is this not? Oh, did not turn on my multiple texture set. So let me just do that for the bullet. Uh, multiple texture sets. All right, let's do this one up. This one needs to be a 4K. Ah, oh, did the stream just cut out? Not receiving enough video. Are we still on? Because it looks like I'm getting an error over here. Be a rough start to the morning. That's okay. Okay. Don't need that for just a bullet. And even 512 by 512 is pretty high. We'll probably eventually uh, bring that down. Okay, <laughs> I think that fixed it. Bullet's looking okay. What? Something going on with the bullet here? Bullet's slightly out of place. set slightly like that. Alright, I think that fixed it. Good enough. Alright, you're gonna see it looks like exported the bake I want. And we're good here. And on this export being that we've baked out uh we've baked out the normal I have in the magazine a stack of eight. So did eight or a seven? Yeah, eight bullets in the mag. And we'll be able to see those uh, updating in Substance Painter since they just share that little tiny material with this one. All right. So don't need any empty objects. I've already, I think I've already made the right export for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, see about bringing up Uh, I did, and it looks like what I had over here was a 2 pixel margin set on a 1K texture size because just the, UV, uh, the UV checker grid that I created was by default just a 1K texture. And so I'm believing that scales up on everything else. I mean, if you're going 1K, 2K, 4K to about 16 pixels at a 4K texture. Okay. 
we're getting the little bolts that are overlapping right there. Hey, how's it going, Abdul? Not two or one K eight pixels. Sounds like a little bit much when you have a hard surface prop with that many UV islands. Sounds like you have to really shrink things down and sacrifice a bit of space, but and I am trying out. Adobe Substance 3D Painter. Having finally just trying it, try, uh, trying the upgraded version since it's gone to Adobe now. So everything seems about the same, but yeah, be discovering this for the first time. All right, so does this work? Okay, so it's gonna, you'll be able to see my screen. Hopefully. Shall I hide this real quick? So you can just see the uh, project settings. All right, so I'm opening a new project. Let's select the export for Marmoset Painter. Okay, document resolution. I'll set it to 2K. I'll do OpenGL. Uh, I'm not concerned with importing cameras or auto unwrapping anything. We've already unwrapped everything. All right, so let's bring that in. Okay. Bring in my two normal maps. Let's just set those to texture. Texture, you probably don't see this screen, but just importing the normal maps as you'd usually do in Substance Painter. All right, got both of those. All right, so we're on the main gun. Let's go texture set, normal map. Drop that in. This one still have the skewing on it. Kind of looks like it still has a bit of skewing going on. Let me check the Marmoset Painter export. Model in separate parts? What do you mean? Oh, when did this change? Uh, it must have changed when I switched from one texture set to multiple texture sets. Okay, just paint this again. Redo that real quick. Do the same on this side. Okay. Let's redo that bake. And what about that little clipping I had? Oh, the clipping's gone, okay. Well, uh, like I'm doing this here and yeah, everything is separated into multiple parts right now. So like there's the frame, 
trigger group, charging handles, the magazine, and that's so that everything can bake down. Ah, that needs to be changed. Need to set the uh, max offset on that. What's this part named? I know it's an early part. Okay, what's this, what's the max offset set to? Okay, that needs to be increased. And now that all appeared, and that's just a preview, so let's go ahead and we'll hit bake again. So yeah, for the game asset, for going through the texturing process, basically all these small little minute parts are all separated out so that I can bake them and nothing gets like clipped onto each other. I saw, I saw his, uh, I've seen his Discord and, um, Javier, you're, you're talking about Javier, right? Or is it someone else? Javier has those really good, um, I hope you've seen his, uh, uh, art station courses. Those game asset courses he does. Those are pretty good. Hey, what's going on? Okay, I think I think that all exported. Okay, so maybe I can just do a a refresh over here. Uh, yeah, the high poly is completely uh, baked down now. Right, let's redrop these in. Okay, all right. I think I yeah, I think I've heard of him before. But that's pretty cool, getting some good feedback. Let me drop this in. Am I at a different location? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm exporting the wrong file. Silly me. All right, let's do the PNG. All right, there we go. Now I, now I exported the right file and got rid of that skewing. 
Let's do the same. Let's just pop in our little texture for our bullet. Okay, and I have one other thing to bring in because I just created... Yeah, the bake came out pretty well. Okay, and we also, I'm just bringing in a little uh, sort of decal sheet. Oh, there's some other decals I have to add to that as well. Okay, I can also grab those from uh, Photoshop. Because that's what we gotta do is the uh, pipe painting next. captured that. I'm just going to be opening Photoshop real quick. bring up my screen in just a second. Really, is that what you're doing in, um, is that what uh, your university program is?
All right. And let me go ahead and uh, bring up my pure ref reference board. Main gun selected. And I think it's which one is it? Is if I hold Alt and click on height, so it's only going to be using the height field. I'm going to set that to a slightly negative value. I'm going to turn on color just so I can see and make sure that I know what I'm coloring. Yeah, let's set that to a bright red. Let's give this a uh, black mask. And uh, I think we can even just go to an orthographic view on this right now. This mask. All right, let's see. I can drop. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can drop this in as our stencil. Yeah, and I think it's like yep S to control the stencil. Been a while since I've covered all of this, so. looks a little pixely right now, making sure it's the right scale. But there are a few other filters that we're going to apply to that to make it look a bit better. I'm just glancing over at my reference, trying to make sure I eye this to about the most correct scale and size. Okay, I think that looks good. save that for a different layer so that we can apply some uh, sharpening to it. just so I can kind of see this on another layer. I think if I hit, was it control? Yeah, control D to make another copy of that. Just so I can have some of these decals on separate layers apply uh, different filters to them individually. Here are the type markings. 
those, uh, those look a little bit pixelated. All right, so what we let's see what we can do with this because I can also fix the decal sheet in Photoshop. Uh, let's say we take this. Can we add a filter to it? Do a blur. Are we adding that? No, we're adding that to the the layer we want to add it to the mask. All right, so to the mask, add a filter, do a blur, lower the intensity quite a bit, and then hardness of the brush. Oh yeah, when, when I'm brushing over it like that, yeah, so there aren't like areas of that stencil missing. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. layers wrong button all right so go to the brush we'll up that hardness it seems too big Wait, is there a separate filter that does like a, uh, yeah, a bevel? Not sure if that's better. Let's see, is it rounded or angular? Can't really tell too much of that size. So what about a smoothing? Too much. I don't know, that does look okay for right now. Ah, you has returned. How's it going? 
Uh, just curious, do you get money designing weapons for games? No, not at the moment. I mean, I do sell, I do have, you know, digital online store to sell some of the weapon models, but uh, I wouldn't even really say there's much, if any, uh, passive income or income to be generated from that at the moment and it's not really not really a focus of mine but i did work on a mobile game a while ago as more of a uh, vehicle artist kind of interim 3d concept design sort of work it was a uh, it was it was good to kind of get a crash course and learning a lot of uh, 3D hard surface skills. Probably need to improve that part of the decal. I put a little bit of a blur on that, but probably need to do a better job of I uh, capture that. And I've just basically masked those from different uh, reference images. default textures in a uh, substance painter like the stuff that's just kind of available in the uh in the library by default you mean yeah that's, that's probably probably most of what i'm using right now But I've used like um, I'll use sometimes assets that I download from a substance source. off these filters right now let's see if we do it with the uh with the bevel let's try that little bevel again lower now uh, let's first do the blur very low intensity on that Do a clamp with the levels. Let's see if we add that bevel. Much. Oh wait, it's doubling up over here because this was a copy. Let me just turn you off. about this one? Did I copy that over? Yeah, I did. Let's do the same to you. Oh, and I see, yeah, no, I don't like that bevel effect there. So let's take that one. We'll do the same thing. We'll add the filters, just the same little processes that I do. And I think I even made, yeah, my Substance Painter uh, weapon texturing tips. 
kind of went over this for just uh, engraving. Yeah, that's uh, that's big detail. this area right here. I wonder why. I, I've noticed there are a few people, quite a few people, who are having like difficulties uh, when it comes to a lot of their uh, big detail. Now, the high poly version of this, of the uh, kind of the pistol grip frames here, you know, I went through the whole process of uh, doing the remesh, smooth, and decimate on that part and several other parts. So basically when it came to the high poly, you know, most of all the smaller parts just get subdivision and bevels. And they look pretty good, I think. Which one? This part here? Take a look because sometimes there's a difference. Let's look at it in 4K. Maybe a little sharp. I don't know, it's got that smoothness. I can see the little light bevel that I put there. Maybe. Because when you compare to the little rear sight here, yeah, that looks a little smooth, that looks a little sharper, just kind of looking at that edge transition. But not so much here, comparing to parts that do have just the uh, bevel and smooth. Let me look. As I can see that little bit of transition, especially right here where I know I had a little bit of a bevel. Oh, I missed something up here.
What other normal details need to be created? Oh, let's isolate that little part. We'll go to the geometry selection. Let's see, what are we doing? Okay, just subtracted that little flash right there. How to model parts inside the gun. Okay, now, wasn't there some new updates to Substance Painter where you actually have parts selection? Because I'm actually... I have no idea how to use those yet. Uh, my previous method would have been to use a opacity mask, basically select parts and then just hide them so then I can see the part I want to work on. And then just basically be, uh, be working off the UV grid. Because you can set, if you're painting manual details on something that's uh, inside the weapon, then you can set your brush to only be, to only paint per the UVs. So that it's not like automatically painting on the surface of something that you have uh, hidden. That's one method. But I know they've done a lot of, uh, a lot of updating. There's even some masking tools that I have probably need to, uh, lore a bit more I can see some new stuff in this uh, in this interface ah, hide ignore exclude geometry hide systems so yeah they have um, they do have some better masking features in here now Thank you. I'm good. just say we clear the mask all right now one little detail let's see this latch which I believe is used for tear down uh, creates a little streak across the surface so let's see we're not looking for textures we are looking for alphas available by oh wait let's see I remember there was one that I I liked to use for stuff like this I think it was like almost like a coffee stain circle yes yeah, something like this gonna work 
maybe once we uh, do a little bit of a do a little filtering on it. I don't know, it seems kind of large. Maybe I can use a different circle. There's like a simple... Can I subtract the arrow from this alpha? No. So a full circle, let's lower the width of it to something like that. Yeah, something like that. And we can control the depth of it here. And it's just gonna be a little bit of erasing and touch up and subtract from a few parts. All right, so right off the bat, let's go. Our geometry select, that set to black, remove it. Do just a little bit of erasing. Let's go get a regular shape alpha. No. Actually, you can do two separate parts right there. And let me see, is my tablet on? Yes, my tablet is on.
Like there needs to be some more uh it's okay. Can I use this? Let's try the basic black and white spots. I don't see anything. Needs uh, like a custom grunge or something. Could probably just uh, instead of using this slope blur, and now I'm getting an error over on OBS. So let me know if it just completely drops out. I'm sure someone will mention something. Uh, can I set a gen? Okay, I can set a generator. That's not what. That's not really what I want. Use a fill and set it. Let's see. We do a multiply. Yeah, I could use something like that to cut up the shape. It's, it's these are these the wood pistol grip frames, and this latch kind of just scrapes through it in this little circular motion. So something that would be is there any sort of like wood grunge sort of thing shavings wood one that's not really not really what I'm looking for let's do grunge maps I can turn that off just so you can probably see what I'm typing when I'm typing it this grunt okay maybe this That kind of makes it look uh, a bit more gnarled. Oh, and I can rotate it? And is this just on the UV? Let's see if I get kind of... Kind of like an angle right there. Maybe lower the opacity on this quite a bit. That's looking a bit closer. Uh, did you unwrap before or after triangulation? Uh, I would not. Yeah, don't don't apply triangulation in Blender like at all. It's only really on your uh, export. So basically, you'll have that triangulation modifier on every part uh, when you export it. But yeah, you don't want to be trying. You do, you don't want to have to try to unwrap a uh, triangulated mesh. That trust me, that's going to be a huge pain. Okay, rotation variation. Hmm. 
liking it. I know, a lot, a lot of work for just a little detail, but it's looking pretty good there. All right. And once we are done with these height details, we export the new normal map and we will start working on all that cool material design. All right. Any other particular normal decals that I am missing? I think there's supposed to be some sort of serial marking right here. Let me look at my reference. Yeah, there is something. Let's bring up my Photoshop. Let's see. So it's creating my little decals right here. I just used some masking tools to grab those. All right. Let's see. Maybe there's another. Let me see if I have another image that I can uh, drop in here for the decals. See, let me Google one thing about the Nambu markings, just so I see if I understand what it is that these markings are. Yeah, it's just not, I'm just looking at this other little section of just like uh, type and manufacturer uh, markings. I'm gonna see if it's fairly consistent with the ones that I already have. The metal part only has a scratch, not a cutout. You mean right here? Or... Right here. Yeah, that needs to be weakened to just kind of more of a slight scratch, and I don't know if it... I mean, the, none of this is a cutout, it's basically just kind of a groove scratch that goes through this. But that's definitely too much on uh, <laughs> uh, for metal. So, but that's why I have that on a separate layer. That might even get reduced more to just kind of a um, specular variation. Oh yeah, I got some good reference of it right here. I mean, it's got a it's got a bit of a of a 
good scratch into the metal. Yeah, a little decent scratch right there, so it's still going to be a bit of a normal detail. Okay, uh, but I'm looking for a another type marking real quick. Save. All right, let's see if we can uh, fix that real quick. All right, probably clamp this a bit more.
We're still in orthographic view right now. Control D, make another copy of that. I'm just gonna clear the previous mask and we will run the mask. Yeah, okay, drop in this new stencil sheet. our brush let's set that brush hardness up okay that is looking pretty good all right then I think that was the last of those little normal details to get done. Okay. Actually, I need to hit a quick break, but I will be right back in just a moment. Okay, all right. All right, so let's say for now that is our hike detail. What about that magazine? Was there anything? Let me look real quick, check if there's any other magazine markings. Oh yeah, there there is some other. Yeah, there's some other detail to get. Fun stuff. Just need a simple checker pattern of sorts. I'm 
checkers, okay? No brick. Yeah, I know, taking me a little bit to remember my usual workflow of this. this same mask or do I need to make a copy of this one let me check
I don't think we want to make any of the sort of wood grain as a no in the normal texture right now. We could try That's really weird that you're having the same dream that I have every night, huh? Okay, let's um, don't need this little bottom layer. All right, let's put all of these in a collection, a folder. Shift E, let's do our export. Let's see, document channels, normal plus AO, no alpha. Well, we don't have an AO, so we should just get, we should just get the normal. Check. Yes, new pew pew models. From what I hear uh, from people in all the videos that I watched researching this gun, a lot of people say that if you buy one of these, do not go pew pew with it. Or one of the Nambu models, at least they said, is actually uh, really prone to some dangerous misfires. Apparently this weapon was very, very notorious, especially the later models that were uh, made during the war. To which people came to think of this gun as almost uh, more dangerous for the shooter than the person on the other end. But I, th I think it's a, I think it's a cool little pistol. Okay. So let's bring in those, uh, I don't really need the, the main gun, I don't need to bring in the bullet. There's no other like, details on that right now. Alright, texture settings. Okay. So, well, let me go to the layers. I'm gonna hide the height collection. Go to texture settings, let's remove this current normal map. Drop in our new one.
nothing. Oh, there it is. Takes a second to update. Okay. Alright, we'll turn off the normal. We don't have a high poly that we're baking from because if this works, we're baking from the pre-existing uh, normal map. So let's see. World space. Well, uh, by normal, do we still have to go to by mesh name? Because I think these impact some of the other settings. Alright, so world space, nothing. Uh, ambient occlusion. Self, let's do only by mesh name, or do we want self occlusion? Let's try only by mesh name. We might have to. The ambient occlusion takes pretty long to accomplish, or at least depending on your hardware. Curvature, self intersection, position, thickness. Actually, let's uh, let's set this to always just for now. And since our magazine is out, it's not going to get like it's not going to get the ambient occlusion from being inside the gun baked onto it. Save settings real quick. Out of orthographic, go back to perspective. Uh, and I do not have an ID map in this instance. Probably could have used it for uh, some other stuff, but you know what? Not really needed. All right, and we're just baking. Is tomorrow judgment day? What's tomorrow? I'm scared now. We're finished. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Did I just do a 5K? I mean, a 500. Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, that, that's why it so, went so quick. We went, did a 512 instead of 4K. All right. Bake again. this coming in. Okay. My whole computer is slow while it's doing this ambient occlusion bake, so I have to, uh, I have to wait to engage with this, and I don't know, um, I want to see if the stream holds up right now. It doesn't sound like my computer is, uh, it doesn't sound like my computer's having a hard time with it or anything, so it's obviously all going through, uh, my video card, my graphics card, but that might cause the, uh, stream to slow down right now. All right, ambient occlusion's done. It should handle, uh, yeah, yeah, like, like I said, the stream is gonna lag for a little bit while it's uh while it's doing this so just hold up hold up hopefully it doesn't crash on us completely I'm 
Why do I have Spotify open on my computer? I never use Spotify. This, the background music is playing through a uh, YouTube music. Hey Jazz, what's going on? Stream is gonna be a little bit laggy right now. Well, it's just finishing this bake. It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. We've uh, started jumping into Adobe Substance 3D Painter. And we've just kind of finished all our normal height detail. Now we got to rebake that to get all of our other uh, texture maps. Model mechs? I would love to get into some more uh, robotics, hard surface sort of stuff. We can definitely plan on it in the in the future. I'm looking. I'm looking at the stream right now. It is looking. Uh, Oh, it's looking like it's lagging a bit. Quite a bit. Oh man, did it go out. Curvature usually does not take this long. I wonder if it's because I'm streaming right now. And if curvature is taking this long, um, why did I leave? Uh, why did I leave the thickness map checked? I need more power. I'm looking, I'm looking at this uh, at the current preview and it looks like it's a fair bit behind. I don't know how much of the info from OBS that's being sent over right now is actually gonna is actually gonna come through. And like my whole computer is really slow like I'm even typing in typing that update in the chat and it like takes a while to even show the text. Okay, it finished uh, position. Now it's doing 
thickness. I thought, I really thought uh, ambient occlusion would have taken the longest, at least on my end, but for some reason curvature took longer. I don't know if I, it was something with the settings I put on my bake. And it looks like thickness is almost done. Hey, I got through it. Okay. Let's see. It doesn't look like... Is the stream picking up yet? this right in the middle of a right in the middle of an auto save let's see did it go nope drop it again and then is there some sort of good wood to use probably have to make quite a few adjustments Alright, now, now YouTube's telling me the stream quality is back up on par. just a mesh select on that part probably because you know, it shares like some uh, some of the same kind of doubled up geometry right here okay so I'll go back to orthographic real quick
Ah, yes. Much simpler to do it that way. Because I keep forgetting when I go into a... Uh, when I go into a 3D only view. And I know that those were the only islands I get that I've got to be considered thinking about there. All right, let's see. We're still viewing this in 4K. That's a bit... That's a bit cumbersome. Let's go down to 2K. Things should move a little bit faster that way. What did I use on this? I used a steel rough. I wanted to use just to compare. That's always kind of got more of my uh, kind of my gun metal base.
Okay, let me check that out. Oh, I, I remember this video in my recommendations. I'll have to check that out. I know it's a pretty simple, uh, it's a pretty simple switch, isn't it? But at the same time, I was seeing like um, this. Uh, yeah, I remember I covered. I was talking about that in my whole Art Stations port, uh, Art Station portfolio renders using Blender Eevee, and I was talking about kind of matching up like that that specularity difference because you kind of see the same thing in Eevee when you're setting up your textures. And um, I know like probably the professional way to do it might be different than how I did it, but I based what I was doing in Blender based off of this like a uh, master materials course that I was doing for Unreal Engine. And it was a similar thing where they use like basically a, uh, some math, a power input, that's why I think like a 0.5 exponent just to kind of you could set your own variable just to kind of control that max roughness. But that's what I was doing in that one course. I think there's another way that you're supposed to do it, though. So I'll check out that video later. Thanks. Oh, I forgot this little bit of normal detail here. I can do that later.
Oh, the stream looks like, just from the preview, it looks like it's almost like a minute or two behind where I'm at. So I'm seeing everybody's messages, but I'm looking at the preview right now, and it looks like, oh, that's a bit farther back. It seems like that, um... I can't tell. It seems like maybe that the lag that I had while baking might, might have uh, set it back quite a bit. It's taking a while for uh, OBS to catch up or something. So sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just seeing your comment now popping up about it being like 20 to 30 seconds behind. So based on that and me reacting to it as media immediately as I saw it pop up, you can kind of judge.
All right, I know we haven't done a whole lot of work on it so far, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way it's turning out. I know it was a uh, pretty, I mean, pretty simple texturing process. Safe. Even Substance Painter, if you engage with it at certain times, yeah, it'll, it'll freeze up a little bit. Heading out. Take care, Sahel. And it is afternoon here already. Okay, I have not even eaten lunch, so I probably have to get off sooner or later. But I'm having fun. So give it a little while longer. some let's just put some brass on there Yeah, yeah, just a good time to chill.
I will look up more more better grunge detail later on, but Bullets overlap? What, you mean uh, inside the magazine, or...? Are you talking about how the UVs of bullets are not individual? Because I only baked one instance of this bullet, and then just kind of duplicated that instance and put it in an array in the magazine, just, uh, just so I can see it. Nothing's going to get a uh, frost bake onto each other because we did all of our baking in a marmoset tool bag. Gonna hit a quick save. Okay, all right, so what can we do here?
I'll probably be getting off soon, but whenever I do end the stream, looking at where the preview's at, it'll probably keep going for another two or three minutes, just based on it being a little bit, a little bit behind the curve. But we're gonna build up a few layers of just a uh, roughness variation. probably a few other things and then I mean that'll probably be the main gist of uh, texturing I'll probably do a few other touch-ups and maybe a little bit of details but uh maybe off stream but that's pretty much the completion of the weapons model now I might do another stream uh, sometime maybe making an interesting uh, an interesting scene or render with this. Um, or I might just do that off stream and talk about it another time. Roughness variation is something I like to look at a lot. Let's put some For the scene, for the scene to create, I was thinking, you know, maybe something like uh, the attached uh, lanyard, or maybe like a like a display case or a box or some holster. It's been shipped, and th those are other options that take a little while, but they could be cool. Definitely for a definitely a cool idea for your uh, portfolio renders as well. All right, take care. I'll probably be uh, shutting it down soon here anyways. So that it may be a, what else can we do for roughness variation? Just some more, another layer of dirt. It's a dirty gun. Actually, Thank you, thank you.
A pistol render with chains. What do you mean? Like he created... Okay, all right. You know what? I think I'm at a good point to stop here. We, yeah, I mean, we took it from completing our our initial normal bake in Marmoset after finishing up all the modeling. We did our height detail painting, which looks pretty good. And then and uh, we did a quick texture pass. Okay, so, I mean, sometimes I like to do this, let's see. It's got our little HDRI background. It's always so cool. Okay, and someone, um, I know someone was asking if we could do like robotics or mechs uh, sometimes in the, sometime in the future. And you know, what? I think that's a pretty good idea. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if we can come up with something to do on stream. But for now, I'm going to leave this project as it is. I'll save here. And thank you to everyone who sat through me baking out textures and getting the stream really laggy. Hey, but it was worth it. And uh, hopefully there'll be, um, there'll be more live streams uh, this week. So we had quite a few people tune in to chat. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, and if once again, if you want, uh, feel free to check out the Discord and the Community Challenge section. Uh, the current challenge theme is to create a health item for a video game. And you can be as creative as you want with that. Uh, it can be, you know, I need a medic bag. It can be any sort of syringe, injectable, or magic potion, whatever you want. Any sort of time error, any style, uh, feel free to jump into that competition. Uh, the prize for that, I'll be judging the competition will be closing October 16th and I'll be judging everything on the 18th 
and the winner will get a standard edition copy of Escape from Tarkov for you to suffer through and trudge through that small inventory size all on your own if you're interested in that. Also out there, um, if anybody's looking to, you know, challenge their 3D modeling skills, there's a lot of other good challenges out right now. Uh, Hum 3D is doing a big uh, vehicle render challenge. I think they do like one or two of these every year. That's a uh, HUM 3D. They're a really big site and they do a really good challenge. So if you want to try like vehicle modeling, which is a great way to improve your hard surface design skills, uh, check them out. I know they have I, I know they have a good category of prizes too involved with that, but definitely give it a try. It's a good thing to get involved with. Also, I recently saw that uh, ArtStation is doing another big community challenge and they're right now and they're in, uh, they're in the concept design phase where there's like uh, characters, props, environments, all for concept design work, which if you're interested in concept design or 2D work, that sort of stuff, you can also use you can also use all your 3D design skills there. Uh, but after the concept designs phase on all of these art station community challenges, they go into the uh, 3D production design phase, where it's either for animation, and they usually have two categories: one for like uh, rendered animation movie production style artwork, and another for like real time. Uh, game asset style artwork and that'll come out after the 2D concept design phase is over so be on the lookout for that it's a really good way uh, to challenge your skills I, I don't know what the I haven't seen what the theme is that they're doing let me look at that Untamed When Animals Ruled the World okay okay that looks pretty cool so look into that it's just on the front page of uh, ArtStation I definitely recommend people who want to, you know, challenge their skills to get into get into things like that. So thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to close the stream off here soon. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll go ahead and complete this as a portfolio project and give an update sometime. All right, take care.